Hi there, this is Vladimir the Vladimir. Um, this is the second video in my series that I'm making just to kind of share what I've been learning as I've been starting out 3D sculpting and 3D printing. Um, what I want to talk about in this video uh, in particular is sort of a design way to sculpt in Blender. And so uh, in my first intro video, I talk about some of my background, starting out drawing and sculpting using physical media. And in both of those cases, uh, there's this idea of sort of building a complex form like a person or an animal from simple shapes. So for example, uh, some books that I remember getting from the library as a little kid uh, were these how to draw books by this great artist, um, an illustrator called uh, Ed Emberley. And so he would go through and walk you through how to make these very simple shapes like, you know, a D and then two circles and then, you know, some Bs uh, and then you fill in the shape. So gradually over time, you have kind of a, a nice graphic looking uh, owl illustration. Those skills are transferable into Blender. And so what I'm going to do now is sort of show you a similar idea of going into Blender using a lot of the pre-made shapes like spheres, cylinders, cones, and how you can arrange those and combine those to build up a more sort of complex form. So right from the beginning, when I start a new general Blender document, I already get a shape to work with, which is this cube. And this is okay. Um, there are some disadvantages to this cube, which is um, if I wanted to add surface detail to the cube, there's not a lot I can do right now. And so in my first video, I showed starting a Blender document in sculpt mode, which lets you work on a sphere of clay. And so the difference between a sphere and a cube is, uh, let's actually just add, we'll do, and so I did shift A for add. And I'm gonna add a UV sphere and there it is right in the middle of my workspace. And so I'm just gonna move it to the side here. So if we have these right next to each other, right now what we're looking at is the outside surface of each object. Um, but if we switch sort of how the computer is displaying this from the surfaces to what's called wireframe mode, we can see the cube is sort of made up of just a very simple set of lines, whereas we have kind of this nice mesh, and that's actually what a model in Blender is called, uh, is called a mesh. Um, we have a nice mesh for the circle. So if I click on the cube to select it, and then go over to sculpt mode, if I come and try to draw on any of the faces, it doesn't do anything. I can only um, come and you know, stretch out one of these vertices or push it in. Whereas if I switch to object mode, so I select the circle and then switch back to sculpt mode. Here, I can, I can really sort of do some deformation and it'll be easier to see if I change this to a back to the surface view. But you can see I'm making a pretty good lump here on the side of the sphere. And so how you can stretch a given mesh around is defined by how many faces it has. Now, the trade-off is the more faces that you have on an object, the more work it is for the computer to render that, to draw it constantly and update its drawing of it as you make changes to it. So uh, just like in that um, Ed Emberley, you know, drawing that we looked at, you want to work from simple to complex. You don't want to start going in and adding in feathers and feet and eyeballs before you have a nice sort of foundation to build your shape upon. Um, and so when I am 
going to sculpt something in Blender, I I do what's kind of called blocking out my uh, my sculpture first with sort of the simple shapes that are available to me. And then I go in and start adding in detail. So we're going to go back to object mode and we're going to just delete out kind of the mess I've made here. And we're going to do shift A and we're just going to add back in a cube. And what we're going to do to try to make this a little bit better to work with is we're going to add a quick uh, change to how this cube is drawn. And so with the cube selected in object mode, over on this right hand side, I have a pane um, that has different uh, information about my cube and I can change the attributes of it. So I'm going to come over here to this little wrench and add what's called a modifier. And so uh, as it says on the name, um, it modifies your shape uh, based on sort of different parameters that you set. So I'm going to add a bevel. And so you can already see it's gone and sort of cut the edges a little bit. And so I'm just going to click on this uh, amount scale and drag to the right and just increase the bevel in. And then I'm also going to click and drag to the right on this number of segments to create sort of a, a rounded cube. And I like the shape for building pretty much anything. Um, it has both clearly defined sort of faces, so I know which way kind of the overall shape is facing, but it also gives me some stuff along the edges um, that I could potentially pull and add detail to. Um, and actually, we'll go ahead and we'll apply this uh, modifier. So if I right along the top here, next to where there's a little camera, I can click apply. And that sort of saves the change to uh, that I've made to the, the cube. So um, for this little video, I'm just going to make, you know, a, a just a bust of a character. So, you know, you go to the museum and you see those busts of like, I don't know, Roman emperors or whatever. Um, it's just the shoulders, neck and head. So that's what we're going to do. So first I'm going to block out the shoulders. So I switched from front to side view and I'm going to kind of flatten this in so we don't have you know, super wide shoulder block. And so I'm going to switch my tool from the select to the scale so I can just scale in this direction. And I click and drag on the green handle. And then um, I am going to use a keyboard shortcut, which is very handy. Um, I'm going to hold shift and then hit the D key for duplicate. And so I've just made a copy of my shape and my mouse cursor has changed to like a little uh, set of arrows. And so I can move the shape around and place it wherever I want. So I'm just going to stack it right on top. And that's going to be the neck. And so um, I'm going to use another keyboard shortcut here and just hit the S key for scale. And so we'll shrink it down to, you know, something like an appropriate neck shape. Then I'll use another key, the G key from grab. We'll scoot it down here. And then we'll do another shift D for duplicate. And this will be our head. And uh, because I'm using these keyboard shortcuts, once I place the thing after I've duplicated it, it puts me back into scale mode. So I can, I can stretch out this block that I'm going to use for the head so it's a little bit you know wider front to back and then I'll use the G key to kind of position it and so if you look at someone from the side you know I have pretty bad posture but um, you'll notice that it's not straight up and down so we're going to actually want to rotate these shapes a little bit so I'm going to click on this so I have it selected Hit the, uh, hit the R key to rotate so that the shoulders are leaning back a little bit. 
Then we're going to click on the neck, hit the R key, rotate it forward a little bit, G to move it down, and then G to move the head on top of the neck. And now we'll take a look at this from the front and see what corrections we need to make. So this isn't too bad, but the, the neck should be a little bit more smooshed in, unless this is like a super jacked fit person. So we'll just scale it in a little bit like this. And so now if we look at this, that's, you know, that's enough to start with. And so at this point, I could make a decision of, um, do I want to keep these shapes separate um, and sculpt the neck separate from the head, from the shoulders? Or do I want to be able to kind of, you know, do a clean sculpt down the surface? So like if I wanted to sculpt like the neck muscle or something, um, do I want to be able to kind of smooth that evenly? And so um, if I wanted to keep these separate, I would want to come over to this top right pane and name each thing appropriately so I can keep track of it. So like ribs, um, what is this? I have selected, this is the head. And that means this is the neck. And so that way I could keep track of things. And that's especially important if like you're doing a whole person or like something really crazy, like a hand where there's like all these finger segments, you know, you really want to keep track of that if you're keeping that separate. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work my way from the head and use another modifier, which is called a Boolean. And uh, I'm going to switch it from difference, which means uh, it would subtract whatever shape that I select second from the first shape. So it would sub subtract the neck from the head and make like a hole underneath it. What I want instead is I want them stuck together. I want them combined. So that is the union of the two shapes. And to make sure that I don't crash my computer, I'm going to switch it from doing an exact calculation to a fast calculation. And then we'll select the neck. Then we'll apply our change. And then um, it's just how it works in Blender. Uh, when it combines those two shapes, the second shape is still left behind. So the neck is still here. And so I want to delete that out because I don't want it interfering with uh, when I go in and do a union of the head and neck to the ribs. Um, also, it's just taking up space. So we'll do the exact same thing again, Boolean. Fast union ribs by and then delete out the ribs. So now we have three things stuck together. And if I go and look at this, you know, in wireframe mode, we can see it's only the, the outer surface that's defined. I, I don't have any of those inner kind of edges that would have been included had I left the shapes separate. And so I'll go back to surface view. The last thing that I would want to do to make this um, easier to sculpt is um, I would want to add another modifier to the entire business. And I would add the remesh modifier. And so I'm just going to leave it at, at sort of the, the default distance. And you can see. Actually, we'll switch to wireframe mode. It's kind of redistributed all the little lines across my shape. So I have much more of a mesh to work with. And so if I go ahead and apply this, I can change it back to uh, sculpt mode. And we can get in here and you know start actually doing some work to make it into something a little bit interesting. So I kind of hit the um, amount of stuff that I want to try to cover in one video for this. Um, you know, again, this is the idea of working from simple to complex and, you know, using the shapes that are available to you in Blender, in object mode, and sort of laying them out uh, use and 
this is a great, great thing where it's good to have, you know, stuff like I do have little, you know, guys on your desk for reference, um, or to do lots of Google image search or have books around to reference, um, you know, things that you can look to for how is this composed of a bunch of shapes and then use that information for how you lay stuff out in Blender. Uh, and, you know, you can do multiple passes of this. You can, you know, build out the bust first and then decide, actually, I want this to be a full figure and then go in, start building out, you know, the stomach and hips and legs and arms and everything. Um, but, you know, it helps to always start from simple and then work your way out. Um, and another reason that that's good is uh, if your computer crashes, uh, you don't lose all your work if you've been kind of noodling around in sort of very fine detail and uh, overtax your computer. You know, you have a strong sound foundation to kind of return to should anything happen. So I hope this is helpful. Um, this is only the second video that I've made. So uh, if you are watching, please let it leave a comment, letting me know that you are. Um, let me know what questions you might have. Uh, give me some tips. You know, I'm a relative novice. And uh, my next video, uh, I plan to get into a little bit more of tricks for sculpting fine detail and also uh, managing your file size and your computer resources so that your computer doesn't crash while you're sort of working on more complex models. So thanks for watching and see you next time.